Hello and welcome to my channel, Simshine. Today's video is something a bit different from my previous few videos. As you can see from the title, I am building a spooky Halloween themed house. Because, of course, it's close to the end of October, so it must be about the time to carve pumpkins. So, we're in the Forgotten Hollow neighbourhood, which I felt was the most fitting for this build. This time I'm running free around all of the items and objects, so not just limited by the base game items like in my previous builds. The house itself, I felt I didn't want to make yet another big haunted mansion type house but rather a smaller family house which had been left and abandoned for some reason. I also wanted to make it look like an English haunted house so I did a little bit of research on the internet and found a few pictures that I liked and so some of the ideas are from my research. Oh, and the fact that I was watching a film adaptation of Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights just the other night, so, you know, that kind of mood went into the building of this house, I guess, too. What I did realise with the Tudor-like wattle and dwarf part of the house was that it should have had a bit more height to it, maybe a small room above it, just in that area, because then it would have been a bit more true to its style, I think. I also forgot about the fact that Tudor-style houses do tend to be narrower and smaller on the bottom levels and then get bigger as they go up. Maybe I need another trip back to York in the shambles at some point when the coronavirus isn't around, maybe I will. <laughs> Now, I did use a lot of items from the vampire pack, although this house in my mind could have had vampires in it, wizards if you wanted them. Really, it was more about the family who had lived there and then mysteriously disappeared one day. I don't think I've done a build that is set back in time like this, so what I did find interesting was how in my usual houses the cost is usually so much higher because there's loads of modern objects and items, whereas this is more simple but still very, um, I don't know, very moody, very, yeah. I may have gone a bit overboard with the ivy and the thorns in the end, although this is why I did name the house Ivy Thorn House. Uh, I was trying to get all imaginative and think of some really good names for it, but Ivy Thorn House just seemed so right because of the ivy and the thorns everywhere. And I know for a fact that once you have the smallest amount of ivy growing, it will absolutely swamp anything nearby to it, like walls, houses, sheds, pretty quickly. So imagine the ivy was here when the family originally lived here, and they would have named the house, it, you know, would have named it that back then. In a way, maybe it became more like its name as it got more abandoned and grew more.
I was originally going to put a fence all the way around the lot, but I got a bit bored. <laughs> and then I kind of ended up on the terrain tools and that kind of solved the fence problem pretty much. You can make your own mind up what happened here in the garden to make the landscape like this. Or maybe it was already like it before the family disappeared. Who knows?
So, this is how Ivy Thorn House looks so far. In the next video, I will be decorating the inside and finishing off the house. If you are interested in downloading this build or any of the other builds on my channel, my gallery ID is Charlie Simshine. They're all uploaded on there for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check back soon for part two. Thanks for watching. Bye.